Hey, thanks for stopping by Cask and Cure Whiskey and Barbecue Meat. I'm your host, Justin Lloyd, and today is our fifth installment of the Tailgate series, and we're doing one of my personal favorites, cheesesteak sandwiches. Stick around. So when you're tailgating, a lot of times you want a good lunch. There's all kinds of snack foods that go great along with tailgating, but a good hearty cheesesteak for lunch is hard to beat. Let's go. All right, before you Philadelphia folks get your panties in a wad, this is a cheesesteak sandwich, not a Philly cheesesteak sandwich. Okay? Okay. Mushrooms, onion, bell pepper, and we have the steak in the freezer to make it easier to slice. Provolone cheese. Let's get started. Give these a rough chop, nothing too fancy. We're tailgating for crying out loud. Rough chop on the mushrooms. All right, let's mix these up pretty good. Get everything incorporated. Let those flavors play together. To make things easy, uh, we're gonna use this Blackstone cheesesteak seasoning. Go ahead and hit your veggies with some flavor. We are cooking on our blaze griddle today. I got one side medium high and the other side is off because that side is where we're gonna put our veggies once we get them nice and uh, caramelized. Uh, you can do this on a black stone. Uh, you could do this on a cast iron skillet over a campfire at your tailgate or over a propane tank fire, whatever you got. You can make this work. So let's get these veggies going. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit these with just some uh, canola oil. You didn't think y'all forgot steak, did you? These are just ribeyes that are thin cut. Don't worry about spending a lot of money on it. Just get the thin stuff. We're gonna include the fat and everything with these guys. See, they're real thin. Pretty inexpensive. I think I spent about $14 after tax on these, and that's gonna be enough sandwiches for a couple folks. If that stuff just wants to come off and move it out of the way. We're looking for pretty thin slices here. And by the way, I kept this in the freezer for about 30 minutes before I brought it out to slice. It just makes it a lot easier, especially for that first part of the football season when it's nice and warm outside. And you don't have to be perfect with this. Get it, you know, pretty thin. Some people like to leave them in uh, strips and some people like to chop it up. Just do what you wanna do with that. It doesn't really matter. You can buy the uh, pre-shredded stuff that comes in a box. It's about $12 at Walmart, but I found that this is a little bit better as far as quality. But if you're in a pinch and you just want to make it even more simple, then that's the way to go. And I'll just give this a rough chop, about like that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Same thing with this, wash and repeat. Like that big hunk of fat right here, I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Nobody wants to bite into that. As a matter of fact, I just threw that piece of fat on the uh, griddle along with the veggies. That's got to be healthy, right? I'm not here to teach you how to eat nutritiously. I'm here to teach you how to cook good food. I believe that's what Matt Pittman over at Meat Church always says. Just kind of a random rough chop there. That'll do it. Back to the griddle. All right, these veggies are done. Let's move those over to the cool side of the griddle, which is over here, obviously. Let's go ahead and hit the griddle one more time with some cooking spray. In this case, it's canola oil. And on goes our ribeye. And you wanna be careful about piling this up in one spot. If you do that, it can cool the grill down, the griddle down, excuse me, and not cook evenly. So you kinda of wanna spread it out, like so. That sizzle, nothing like it. So easy to do at a tailgate. Then we'll just come back and hit that with some of the same seasoning, that Blackstone uh, cheese steak seasoning, not to be confused with Philly cheese steak. And there's enough heat on this other side of the grill to keep those veggies warm. So if you're doing this on a, uh, like a skillet, all you need to do is push everything to one side and you can move the skillet however you need to keep heat on one side of the skillet versus a cool side. Basically all I, what I'm saying is with a skillet you can still create two zone cooking. Man, that smells so good already.
Try to spread that out. This won't take long, so don't run off drinking beer. Drink beer by the griddle, or iced tea in my case for now. Or even if you're a Diet Coke kind of guy. Hell, you could even do Mountain Dew. Or you could do Mountain Dew and Bush Light. Card right up there. You can go check that out, that's a good one. <laughs> There's lots of videos on uh, how to make a cheesesteak sandwich on the YouTubes and the interwebs. But seriously, you can find this recipe just about anywhere. This isn't anything, this isn't anything special really. It's really easy and always comes out really good. Inexpensive. I kind of like to chop right here too. It's loud, but it makes people turn around and look. You might have a big crowd before you know it. You'll have a party going. And you're tailgating, so why not? Make it fun, man, make it fun. Life's too short to not have fun. In moderation. It's good and medium rare to me. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the griddle down to low. Well, no, actually I'm gonna turn it off because this heat is retaining. And then we're gonna assemble our sandwiches. But before we do that, let's move this off to the side. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, boy. Man, that smells awesome. And today we are rolling with some sweet Hawaiian hoagie rolls. I just picked those up at Walmart, throw them on the griddle just to get a little toasty. I like them because they open up right in the middle and they're perfect for uh, subs. I'm gonna keep on flipping these, make sure they don't get too crispy on one side. Just wanna warm them up basically. Put these over here on the cool side. Let's bring everything back over to this side and mix all that goodness together. And we're about to do the final application here, which is gonna be the provolone cheese. Make sure that's all nice and mixed up. Provolone cheese. I like to have it pretty cheesy, so I'm gonna add three more slices. Again, this is only for two folks, so if you wanna make a big old batch of this stuff, all you gotta do is double up the ingredients or triple them up, whatever. You can pretty much make it your own kind of style, whatever you like. Here's a little trick, a little water for steam, just like that. Then we'll cover it up with a little lid. That's a black stone lid, pick that up at Walmart as well. It helps steam the top from the top down. Make sure that cheese is nice and melted. We'll let that go for just a little bit. All right, that's about where we want it. As you know, that cheese will continue to melt. So let's build a sandwich. All we gotta do is go right down the middle. Layer that in there just like so. And that cheese is gonna keep on melting. Oh, melty, cheesy goodness. My buddy Steven's over here having lunch with me this Saturday. It's a game day. I bet you are. I said, man, what are you doing for lunch today? He said, well, I guess I'm coming to your house to eat a cheesesteak sandwich. I said, you guessed right. All right, so here's our final product. Nice and cheesy. It's got all the flavors of a cheesesteak sandwich you want. Everything's caramelized just perfectly and I think it's time to dig in. All right, so, wow, that cheese is dripping off there. Get back in there, big guy. Let's go in for a bite. It's perfect, everything you want. Cook that at your next tailgate. It's gonna be a hit, I guarantee it. Hey, thanks for stopping by Cask and Q or Whiskey and Barbecue Meat. If you wanna help out this channel, you can like, subscribe, and smash that bell. When you hit the bell, it's gonna notify you anytime anytime I upload a new video. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you next time.